Hello, Namaste, Wanakkam, Kemcho, Hola, good morning everyone. And we welcome you all on behalf of the Indian section on this uh, third and final session of one of the manuals that is being taken up, written by Sister Dr. Annie Besant, that is Karma. But before we go into our meeting, I request everyone to mute their microphone so that the speaker can speak without any interruptions in between. And if there are any questions or answer questions or queries or feedback or comments, we will take them up at the end of the session when we have time. So to start the meeting, let us all come together in heart and mind and invoke the presence of that immutable principle in which we live, we move, and have our being. O oh, hidden light, vibrant in every atom. O oh, hidden light, vibrant in every atom. O oh, hidden light, shining in every creature. O oh, hidden light, shining in every, in every creature. O oh, hidden love, embracing all in oneness. O oh, hidden love, love embracing, embracing all, all in oneness. One. May each who feels himself as one with thee. May each who feels himself as one with thee. Know he is also one with every other. No, he is also one with every other. Shanti. Shanti. Welcome back once again, everyone. And today, as you, all of you are aware, that we have been having this series of the manuals, the Theosophical manuals, in which we have among us Sister Aban Patel, who has been taking up the manual on karma for the two past sessions and today is the third and the final session that she will be taking up and she doesn't need any introduction now that she has been already speaking but still for the sake of the new attendees new members who are among us i would like to give a brief introduction of sister aban patel that Sister Aban Patel is a graduate from Bombay University. Now it has become Mumbai with English literature as a special subject. She is a trained teacher too, which we will see when she explains to us the subject which only a teacher can do. And after working as a teacher for about seven years, she took up banking job and retired as a bank official after putting in long service of 35 years. She then joined Blavatsky Lodge, Mumbai in 2012. However, her love for teaching did not ebb. So when she was asked to take up study classes at Blavatsky Lodge, she agreed. And since 2013 till date, she has been taking study classes. Her skill in teaching different subjects and books of Theosophy speaks volumes. Sister Aban is also on the managing committee of the Blavatsky Lodge and she's the president of Shanti Lodge. She's also a member of Bombay Theosophical Federation Council. She has attended schools of wisdom at Adyar as well as at Varanasi. In January, 2021, at the request of the president of Bohai Valley Theosophical Society, California, she gave a talk on the history of Zoroastrianism and teachings of Zarathustra in the light of Theosophy. The said talk is now printed in a book, Zoroastrianism. She has been a speaker on Tuesday's Triveni program started by Brother Taral Munshi of Jyoti Lodge, Mumbai. Sister Aban is a senior active member of Lions Club of Babullah since last 25 years. And she is a devotee of Avatar Meher Baba, and she is of the opinion that his teachings helped her in enhancing her studies in theosophy and vice versa. 
<clears throat> a contribution to theosophy is as in the words of Madame Blavatsky, knowledge increases in proportion to its use. The more we teach, the more we learn. So without further ado, without taking any more time, I request Sister Aban Patel now to take over the mic and share with us the third and the final segment of this manual, Karma. Over to you, Sister Aban. Thank you, Brother Shikhar, for lovely words. And before I start my last final talk on karma, the third section, I will do my mantravani of avastha. Ahaya yasa nebangaha Ustano justo rafeya Maina yush must da pauravim Spent yasha vispenga shotana Wange hush karatum manangoya Kasne visha gura urwane meaning to him I pray with a grateful heart and hands uplifted for the perfect bliss. O Mazda's spirit, first I pray through Asha, so true knowledge I gain. And to Vahumano's loving wisdom too, and thus bring solace to the soul of the earth and the world. Amen. Thank you. I hope he's muted. At the outset, when I started my talk on 24th of April on the fourth manual, Karma, I had said that I will be doing talk in three phases. And today is my last one. First, we did generation of karmas. Then we did making, working, and facing of karmas. Today, the last one, building future, molding, and seizing, stopping of karmas so that we stop our rebirths, which we take again and again and again. And I hope we all that. Now, when man asks the meaning of the law of karma, of its absolute certainty, of its unerring exactitude, begins to take himself in hand and actively superintends his own evolution. He scrutinizes his own character and then proceeds to populate it, deadly practicing mental and moral qualities, enlarging capacities and strengthening weakness. Daily he will meditate on his ideal. Daily he will strive to live it. And he will do this persistently and calmly, without haste, without rest. For he knows that he's sitting on a sure foundation on the rock of eternal law. He appeals to the law. He takes refuge in the law. For and there is no failure. During earth life, he gathers, he experiences utilizing all that comes in his way. And in Devachan, he assimilates them and plans the future. When a man unends the working of the karma, 
he builds his character with deliberate care, knowing that he is building for eternity. There will be drafting of well thought out scheme of character, as it were, and then the building according to the scheme. For the soul becomes an architect as well as a builder. The speed with which the later stage evolution is accomplished is far greater as the soul becomes strong. As we mature in our physical body also, we are maturing in our uh, spiritual way and our soul becomes stronger and stronger day by day. Now molding of karma. The man who has set himself deliberately to build the future will realize as his knowledge increased that he can do more than mold his own character. Thus, making his destiny, he begins to understand that he is at the center of the things in very real sense, a living, active, self-determining being, and that he can act upon circumstances as well as upon himself. He follows the ethical laws laid down for the guidance of humanity by the divine teachers who have been born from age to age and he under, understands that these laws are based on fundamental principle in nature. He knows how to neutralize ill results that follow some ill deeds by force of good. As knowledge increases, his action also improves and can check its very inception. If there is going to be any karma that would result in negativity. As man follows the teaching of the masters, they help in cleansing the seeds of and prevent a future harvest pain. When man reaches a stage comparatively advanced, drifting average humanity, he will build such thought forms which come his way where he can see the past and thus more accurately gauge the present, tracing karmic causes onwards Knowledge enables him to utilize the law with the same certainty with which scientists use, utilize it in every department of nature. When we use karmic force to affect karmic results, we conquer nature by obedience. Pleasure and pain experienced in life the success or failure that attend the friends and foes who appear are all determined by karma of lives. All our past accumulated karmas which were created in previous lives but not worked out and so remain in balance are carried forward and are no sanchit karma. Let us now suppose that the advanced student glancing backwards over the past sees lines of past karma coming to a point of action of an undesirable kind. He can introduce a new force among these converging energies and so modify the events. In this way, lessen or draw the results of evil wrought by him in the past by the good forces he pours forth into karmic stream. 
he cannot undo the past nor he can destroy it but so far as its effects are still in the future he can modify them or reverse them by the new force he is to bear as causes taking part in their production karmic determination is also popularly known as fate f a t e it is not some foreign or oppressive principle fate is man's own creation pursuing him from past lives and just as it has been shaped by past karma it can also modify remolded and even un through karma in this present life hence karma may accelerated or delayed and thus will undergo modification by the action of the surroundings amid which it is worked out prarabdh karma is knowledge grows it becomes easier to know the quantity of mass collected and the powers that be our masters for really those karmas which man can suffer and work out and get rid of the karma of the past all these karmas come within the sight of the soul which is approaching creation those who are clairvoyants reach to certain extent level or so they can see their own karmas of the past as well as future it is able to how many of those causes have worked themselves out and are exhausted it is able to look not only backwards but also forwards in the future and see the effects these causes will produce it's only the divine soul that can see the karmic causes the set going behind it and also the karmic effects through which it has worked in the future kriya mini karmas with such a knowledge of causes and vision of their working out it is possible to introduce fresh causes to neutralize these effects suppose vines of hatred have been set going on in past man can deliberately set to work to quench these vibrations by being up against them the vibrations of love but if he continues with his hatred in this birth also he adds up to more negative karmas which he will have to suffer once man understands this law and takes oral precepts of the great religious teachers of the world on the subject he learns a lot so devotion and obedience to a teacher may work towards liberation as knowledge might otherwise do applying these principles in every direction man will begin to realize how handicapped he is due to ignorance how great is the part played by knowledge in human evolution men drift because they do not know they are helpless because they are ignorant to finish his course successfully he needs wisdom as well as love knowledge as well as emotion there is no need for him to wear out Slowly, the links of chains forged along long, long ago. He filed them off swiftly through 
and be rid of them as effectively as though they slowly rusted away to set him free. Now, the theme of karma, how to creation of karma. Karma is us ever back to rebirth, binds us to the wheel of births and deaths. Karma drags us back as relentlessly as bad and the chain which is wrought out of our virtues holds as firmly and as closely as that force from our lives. How shall we, how then shall weaving of the thing be put an end to? Since man must think and feel as long as he lives, thoughts and feelings are ever generating karmas. We have learned that thoughts generate karmas. How to put an end to it? And the answer to this question is the great lesson of the Gita. Lesson taught to the warrior prince, not to hermit, nor to a student was that lesson given, but to the warrior for victory, the prince immersed in duties of his state. In Gita Discourse 3, Shloka 19, Lord Krishna says to Arjun, Tasama Dasta Tanta Kadya Karms Samachar Asakto Hyacha Karma Param Panoti Purushaha. Meaning, therefore, without punishment, constantly perform action which is duty, for by performing action without attachment, man verily reaches the supreme. Not in action, desire. Not in action, but in attachment's fruit lies the binding force of action. And action is performed with desire, enjoy its fruit. A course is adopted with desire to obtain its results. The soul is expectant and nature must reply to it. To every cause is bound its effect. To every action its fruit. And desire is the cord that links them together. The thread that runs between. If this could be burned, the connection would cease. And when all the bonds of the heart are broken, the soul is free. Karma can no longer hold it. Karma can no longer bind it. The wheel of effect may continue to turn. It goes on turning but the soul he becomes the liberated life to perform this karma yoga yoga of action man must perform every action merely as duty doing all in harmony with the law seeking to conform to the law he aim coming of for working with divine will for pollution and not for any fruit that they may bring. The action is performed as duty. Man, free from desire, his thoughts controlled by self, having abandoned all attachment, performing action by the body alone, he is not committing. The man which is this state of inaction in action has learned the secret of seizing of karma. He destroys by knowledge the action he has generated in the past. 
He burns up the action of the present by devotion. These bonds of desire then, of personal desire or of inner desire must broken. But many a times, man the mistake and that by breaking the bonds of desire does not mean breaking bonds of the heart by trying to kill the heart. We do not break the bonds of desire by trying to turn ourselves into stones unable to feel. Our heart must work. But become more sensitive, tender, and not hard. For the perfect disciple who is as master, Masters are also very sensitive. They are out of this karmas, but they are very generous and very loving. So the perfect disciple who is as the master is one who answers to every thrill in the outside universe, who is stuck by and responds to everything because he desires nothing for himself, but is able everything to all. Such a one cannot be held by karma. He forges no bonds to bind the soul. He asks nothing but to be a channel of divine life to this world. He desires working for nothing except to be service to all. But there is one bond that breaks whatever. The bond of that real unity, capital R, capital U, real unity, which is no bond. For it cannot be distinguished as separate. That which unites the capital O N E to the all, disciple to the master, the master to his disciple. The divine life which draws us ever on and upwards, but binds us not to the wheel of birth and death. If you see our universal prayer, the last paragraph where it says, O hidden love, Embracing all in oneness, may each who feels with thee also know he is also one with every other. So that oneness should be considered as a bond. It is a unity. It must be there. As Swami Vivekananda has said, in all our actions, we have to judge whether it is making for dividing or for oneness. If for divide, we have to give it up. But if for once, we are sure it is good. So that way we must learn to know which is correct and incorrect. Now collective karma. The gathering together of souls into groups, forming families, castes, nations, races, introduces a new end of perplexity into karmic results. And it is here that room is found for what are called accidents as well as for the adjustments continually being made by the lords of karma. A man's birth in a particular nation is influenced by certain general principles of evolution as well as by immediate characters. The soul in its slow development has not only passed through the seven root races of globe, but also through sub races where long series of incarnations have been followed by our elders, by our clairvoyants, 
it has been found that some individuals progress from sub race to sub race very regularly, whereas others are more erratic, taking repeat incarnations, perhaps in one sub race only. The family ties is really of more personal character and those who weave bonds of close affection in one life tend to be drawn together again as members of the same family. Sometimes these ties recur very passionately, life after life, and the destinies of two individuals are very intimately interwoven in successive incarnations. Sometimes in consequence of the different lengths of the Devachans, due to differences in intellectual and spiritual activity during the earth, members of a family may be scattered and may not meet again until after several incarnations. Speaking generally, the more close the tie in the higher regions of life, the greater the likelihood of, of rebirth in a family group. Here again, the karma of the individual is affected by the intent karma of family. The working out in detail of karma and for precise understanding, a long study of individual cases is necessary. Traced through many thousands of years by those who can have an insight of clairvoyance. Patient observation on this matter is needed. Here we can call the lives of Alkion, that is Krishna Murthy, written by Dr. Annie Besant and Bishop C.W. Leadbeater. In this book, we can observe that birth after birth, Krishna Ji is connected with group of servers, that is a band of people who have offered themselves to do some amount of work, the world, especially the work of the pioneer and also with some of the masters. Even in the book, Man, When, How and Whither, we see that some of our elder theosophists were connected with each other, not only as humans, but also in animal kingdom too, who when were individualized, they again came together as theosophists. There is one other aspect of collective karma on which some word may be rightly said, and that is the relation between man's thoughts and deeds and the aspects of external nature. Thought is matter and it exhibits an objective on astral. All this we have done in our earlier lectures. The thought forms very, very important. Thought is matter, I'm sorry, thought forms of destructive character and when these congregate into huge masses on the astral plane, their energy is precipitated on the physical plane, stirring up wars, revolution, and social disturbances and upheavals of every kind, falling as collective karma on their creator and affecting widespread ruin. Thus then, collectively also, man is the master of his destiny 
and his world is molded by his creative action, good bad. We've seen recently the destruct action of one man which has created so much of ever, so much of destruction, so much of death, not only in one place, but in many places. Earlier it was in Germany, and now it is in Russia. Ukraine. Ukraine, part of Russia. Epidemics of crime, diseases, cycles of accidents, have a similar nature. Thought forms of anger aid in the perpetration of murder. These elementals are nourished by the crime. We have done about the elementals in my very first session. They are always waiting for such negative actions and they are helpful in that. Thought forms of anger aid in the perpetration of murder. These elements are nourished by the crime. Disease is spread and the thoughts of fear which follow their purpose act directly as they strengthen the power of the disease. In the example of recent pandemic, we all have seen that public became more nervous and sick just by hearing, watching the gory sights of dead bodies, people dying due to lack of medical facilities, corpses being burnt en masse on television. In every direction, in endless fashions, do man's evil thoughts play havoc as he who should have been a divine co-builder in the universe, he becomes a power destroyer. In conclusion, this is outline of great law of karma and of its working, by knowledge of which a man may accelerate his evolution by the utilization of which a man frees himself from bondage and becomes one of the helpers and saviors of the world. A deep and steady conviction of the truth of this law gives life an immovable serenity and a perfect fearlessness. Nothing can touch us that we have not wrought. Nothing can injure us that we have not merited. And as everything that we have sown must ripen into its waste in new seed and must be reaped, it is idle lament over the reaping when it is painful because it is we only who have sown the seeds. Painful karma may therefore well be faced with a joyful heart in this life only as a thing to be gladly worked out through and done with. It is better have it behind us than before us. The strength of a belief measured by its influence on conduct and belief in karma ought to make life pure, strong, serene, and glad. Only our own deeds can hinder us. The hour of the liberation has struck. Nature cannot enslave us. All that by wisdom has gained power and uses in love and service. Thank you. This is the end of my third talk. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Sister Aban, putting it in such a lucid manner in front of all of us.
the very complex theory, not just currently maybe a theory, but in fact a reality of law of karma, that how from the biggest of events to the smallest of actions are governed by this invisible but perceivable law of karma. Thank you so much. And uh, now <clears throat> we request our delegates, our participants, if they have any question, I think not just about this session of karma, but whatever maybe uh, Sister Avan has shared in the past two sessions on karma, if there are any queries, any doubts or any clarifications, any comments, please you can unmute yourself, you can raise your hand and we will invite you <clears throat> for putting up your questions. And to begin with, uh, while you are thinking of any question or it's coming to your mind, a uh, comment from Brother Naveen Kumar ji is there and he says, in my view, the lives of Alkyoni is probably the most comprehensive book for the study of the law of karma in life. I think we cannot agree more that yes, because since it is a book which covers so many lives of uh, Jivatma, so we can, I mean, we can view it like a movie that this happened, so this happened, this happened, so this happened, and we can connect the chain of events. Any comments from your side, uh, Sister Aban, on this? <clears throat> well, we have uh, studied this book in our Blavatsky Lodge, this lives of, Al 48 lives of Alkyon. Yeah. Yeah. And it so happened, it is my personal thing, I will just share with you. In the beginning, when I started, uh, of course, naturally, it was recommended by our Navinji, who was present at that time. It was way back in 2013. So when I started reading, I said, my goodness, 77,000 years ago, how can you have all these things on record? So one or two chapters I read, and then I said, yes, sir, I'm very sorry. I cannot digest it. And so I'm giving it back to you. So he said, no, 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 Sister Raban, you first read the uh, introduction, which has been given by Red Leadbeater. It, it solved a lot of your questions. But then I think, okay, I will do that because he is more knowledgeable than I am. So I said, okay. Then I saw a small book, Clairvoyance, in a library. So okay. I said, let me read this book, Clairvoyance. And when I read this book, Clairvoyance, my really, my inner eyes did not open, but my physical eyes became so huge. I said, goodness, if you have that Amma Chakshu opened up, then we can see so many. And then I started reading again, this book of Alkion, 48 Lives. And one life after another, one life, and how the things have happened is, is unimaginable. I feel that this book must be read by everyone yeah. in order to know, not only for uh, Krishna Murthy ji, for every one of us, how it takes place. And of course, then came the book, Man, When and With Us. <laughs> there, in Animal Kingdom, Heracles, Upra, lead be, upra, any basin, any basin. Lead beater and all those master moria master how they come again and again and again even from animals to the uh, humans so these things do happen and we only hope that we learn from our masters and from others by reading digesting and by putting into practice what they left for us for the posterity. Thank you, thank you, Sister Avan, for your comments. And before we take up uh, another question, we uh, have brother, a... brother Shikhar. Good morning to you. Ah, good morning, actually, Yes, uh, yes. Actually, actually, I just uh, wanted to uh, supplement what Sister Avan has said. Yes, please. Uh, yes. After completing her very lucid. Uh, 
uh, presentation as you said so uh, uh, and since you are located in adr uh, i thought i must mention that uh, it's a pity that these two wonderful books uh, uh, lives of elkion and man hence how and whither they are not reprinted by uh, theosophical publishing house and uh, 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 and they are, and I, though i have i had written to radha ji also and uh, subsequently also to the president but somehow it has remained unprinted and uh, so to uh, remove this difficulty i have uh, uh, to some extent i have typed out both the books and put on the web uh, but many people don't find it very convenient to uh, read on the web such a uh, uh, such a voluminous books so if you can if you can use your uh, good offices while you are in adr it will be a good service to the theosophical society thank you brother thank you no thank you thank you sir for your suggestion and guidance based on your experience we'll definitely try to do that and make more and more people aware of it thank you sir and before we take up uh, next question we have a comment from brother ganesh kumar ji thank you sir shraban patel the, okay he has also one more thing he is saying the essay on karma at the end of the three gems of theosophical society that is the light on the path the end of the light of the path there is a essay on karma which is also a very useful study i think many of us might have studied that uh, essay have you have you ever did you get a chance to go through it sister aban that no, essay no no it's okay it's okay no no brother shikhar uh, we have uh, studied this book uh, in our uh, levetsky lodge uh, in great detail uh, and perhaps one should uh, while sister aban may not have been uh, able to attend those uh, lectures but uh, uh, i can only add that uh, of the three mystical jewels the three mystical jewels uh, which a theosophical society has that is uh, uh, light on the path voice of the silence and at the feet of the masters a light on the path is actually the most powerful because uh, as mentioned in that in the commentary uh, that uh, this book uh, is useful even to for those persons who have achieved the adepthood that is who have achieved the fifth initiation even they can benefit from this book so i agree 100% with you that uh, the the sm uh, small essay karma added to this light on the path it's a very very nice uh, a nice essay and worth reading again and again thank, thank you brother thank you thank you navin ji uh, any one else who would like to ask any question because karma is such an interesting subject that we keep dealing with it keep coming across with it in our daily life from the smallest of the action so uh, if any uh, questions or anything is there kindly uh you can raise your hand and mute yourself in the meantime i would like to read a comment from sister jasmine wonderful and lucid talk very interesting indeed thanks a lot dear aban you are an excellent teacher we all agree to that sister jasmine very grateful that uh, we feel like we are in a classroom and Uh, the teacher aban is teaching us with, with her uh, care and affection and at the same time being strict also so which is very correct so brother rajiv gupta has said man whence how and whither is in print from adyar i recently brought it from there yes it is already printed and it is available in from adyar theosophical publishing house adyar so anyone who would like to uh, buy the book kindly email to tphindia at gmail dot com. So, uh, any other question from anybody? Uh, kindly raise hands or 
then I will invite, I can invite you to, to ask your question. Or it either it means that Sister Aban has explained it so well that everybody has understood the alpha and omega of law of karma and which is the most likely possibility. But in your experience, uh, Sister Aban, yes. uh, do you think the deeper, I mean, how is your approach towards law of karma in relation with the small, small events of our daily life? And does it give us a sense of peace and calmness when we apply it in our daily life? Because I can compare, I have a good life led so far. And before I joined Theosophy, I knew many things about good way of living life. But after to Theosophical Society when I saw, all this time I have been hearing talks of elders from my religion, from other religions and all that. And I knew that law of karma is there which takes place. But it was very difficult to accept when the time came when some tragedy falls on you, when some problem comes. Yes. So all that knowledge sort of evaporates. And you again start becoming very agitated. Sometimes you don't want to even go to an um, altar and pray to God. Such things used to happen before I joined. But once I went through all these books and I studied them thoroughly, then my perspective changed. The problems were coming. But in the beginning, for example, if there is something happened to my children, naturally, other, I would get agitated. And especially when a child is away, away thousands of miles from here, you can't do anything. Only one thing you can do, and that is prayers. And that gives a lot of solace. You can pray to anybody. You can pray to even now nobody, but give go on sending positive thoughts. That gives us also a lot of uh, solace, as well as if it reaches there, they're also getting a lot of it. So this is my personal experience. And believe me, we are human beings. We are not superhuman still. We have to go through certain number of rebirths, but we have to go on thinking and assimilating the knowledge that we are getting from all these tomes which have been left by our theosophists and try to follow them. Beginning, Mata Jara will feel agitated. So you settle down and then you will say, hai to, ma che. to do, you can't undo. Go on praying for good wishes. And I will do that for every one of you who so we wish for all of us, wish for you also and the family and everybody's family <coughs> who is here the same. And I think we couldn't agree more on this, all of us, that uh, the more we study, the deeper we go in these uh, laws of nature, the more we apply them in our life, the same situation, but we remain a little bit more calm and then able to face it better. So thank you. Since there are no more questions, so on behalf of uh, Indian section, I would like to thank our today's speaker, uh, Sister Aban Patel, who has completed today the fourth manual, uh, Theosophical Manual on Karma, and explained it in a very lucid manner and in such a with such a depth and insights from her own life that we hope that all of us would contemplate on it and try to make it a living reality in our lives. So thank you, Sister Aban, for being with us. Also, we would like to thank all our delegates who have joined us <clears throat> from India and abroad and made this uh, session vital uh, with their participation. And before we go to the closing prayers, I would like to make a couple of announcements.
uh, one announcement. First announcement is for TS Triveni Tuesday meet, 17th May, in which Sister Bipa Saxena will be speaking on the greatest blessing. Uh, <clears throat> just... On the greatest blessing in on the occasion of uh, uh, the Vaishak Purnima, also known as Buddha Purnima. So that uh, everybody is invited to join on 17th May, 6.30 p.m. And in Gujarati will be Sister Ranjan Vaidya and in Hindi will be Sister Meenakshi. So that is uh, one announcement. And today evening also we have uh, a special event in Pragya CS studio. <coughs> it is not a lecture, but it's a light uh, uh, event of celebrating nature through music at 5 p.m. And we all know Sister Jayshri Kandan from Adyar who will be presenting uh, some uh, uh, musical uh, excerpts and her uh, songs and we will enjoy all of that. So all of you are invited at 5 p.m. today. And with this, we come to the close of today's session. So let us uh, come together to use our thought power and willpower for the welfare of all beings. <clears throat> Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Makaschitukh Bhadvave, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you Thank once you again, much. everyone. Thank you, yeah. Shikhar, for conducting the so well thank and you everybody thank you and wishing you all a very enlightening and insightful buddha purnima tomorrow that it's 9 44 indian time and 0414 gmt so kindly read in masters and the path or watch the youtube video of pragyasi studio on vesak purnima for what happens on that event so and may this event uplift us in spiritual Thank you, everyone. Please, if you want, you can unmute yourself and give your blessings and wishes to Sister Aban. <laughs> Thank you very much. I you. Thank you, Sister Aban. Sorry? Thank you, Sister Aban, for a very enlightening talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Aban. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Abanji. Yes, I bolo. Thank you, Avanji, for a very deep and insightful talk. <coughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you thank for you, my Avanji, Friday classes. For excellent uh, thank you, Avanji, for presentation. Thank you, Avanji, for excellent presentation. Sushma from Allahabad. Uh, Sushma ji, jara aapka muh to bataiye. Meri aawaz hi pehchan hai. Chara, bol ye. Koi banda nahi. Koi, koi. Sister, sister, sister Aman, uh, Dr. Sushma Shiva 